because I do the same makeup every single time I wear makeup, which is not very often. Often? 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 People are having an argument outside my house. I'm trying to film a YouTube video. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel after months and months of wanting to set up a youtube channel and do youtube videos i have finally done it which is really exciting really nerve-wracking i'm absolutely terrified but i'm really excited to see where this goes what ideas everyone comes up with for videos what i come up with for videos and hopefully this will be a really fun enjoyable experience for everyone so as you can see this is the final look from the video and if you want to see how I got to this point then keep watching and I hope you enjoy. So I've got my questions in front of me, I have got my makeup and I'm just going to do my makeup, have a chat, answer some questions and hopefully by the end of the video you'll know me a little bit better. I'm just going to start off by introducing myself because you might not know who I am. If you've come across this video randomly you might not have any idea who I am. So my name is Grace Holden, I am 19, I had to think about that then, I am 19 and at the start of the year I was on The Voice UK. I was very lucky enough to get to the final and very very lucky enough to come second. It was an absolutely amazing experience and yeah, since then I have kind of just been working on social media, doing some gigs, um, yeah, just going through the life of coming second on The Voice, which is a great life I must say. <laughs> it has been very, very fun. I absolutely love it and I would not change it for the world. But yeah, that's just a little bit about me. I look crazy. I look absolutely mad. One thing I will say with makeup, well, with my makeup, is you have to trust the process. <laughs> I tell myself that every single time I'm doing my makeup, you have to trust the process because it will not look like this by the end of it. I promise. I also tell myself that to make myself feel better because you never know how it's gonna go. So I'm now going to do my powder, which clearly I need a new powder. I accidentally stood on this the other day. It was on my floor. I didn't realize and I stood on it and now it's completely cracked and it also keeps going everywhere. I've got it all over my hand and it will be all over my floor and my bed by the end of this, but it's okay. So the first question I get asked quite a lot is when did I start singing? Now, I don't really have a time where I was like I want to sing but my first kind of memory of singing was when I was four and I was on holiday with my family at a caravan park and there was a talent competition and my mum asked if I wanted to enter just for a bit of fun and I said yes and I ended up coming third and from then I remember thinking oh this is really fun and then I started in musical theatre when I was six and it kind of just went from there. I've done musical theatre since, as I say, as I was six and I went to college and did musical theatre. I was going to do musical theatre at uni, but then Corona happened, the voice happened and I didn't end up going. But I still love it. It will always be my first love. But yeah, first kind of memory of singing was when I was about four. Next question is, what are my hobbies? So other than singing, obviously, um, I absolutely love baking. Baking and cooking, I love it. I would do it all the time. When I was younger, I would help with the cooking in the house. I would help my mum make dinner. I would bake things for after dinner. I'd love to my family would come home from work and there would just be an array of cookies and cupcakes and all kinds of stuff just on the side for everyone to, to eat 
just because I absolutely loved doing it. It's just such a, just shove on some music, bake, and then you get to eat it all afterwards. It's a, it's a hobby that pays because <laughs> you get to eat it all afterwards, which I absolutely love. But yeah, I would say my favorite thing to bake is, Mm, probably millionaire shortbread which i only really make at christmas i say i only really make i only make it at christmas i don't know why it's just always been a christmas thing i make millionaire shortbread fudge and gingerbread men every christmas without fail and then i give it to everyone that i see family friends everyone that comes around or i go and see at christmas i'm like here's treats for everyone um, but I absolutely love it and I will say my family are not complaining either because they get to enjoy it as well. But other than baking, I don't really have many other hobbies. I've just joined a gym, if that counts as a hobby. But I say I've only just joined, I joined about three weeks ago. But yeah, other than that, I don't really do anything else. I sing, I cook, I bake. That's it. What an exciting life I have. <laughs> so now that the contour slash bronzer is blended in, I then move on to my eyebrows, which is usually the part that is the most hit or miss. It either goes perfectly right and I have no problems, or it goes incredibly wrong and I have to take them off and do them again. So let's see how it goes. The most commonly asked question I get when I meet someone and they find out that I've been on The Voice or they are asking me questions about The Voice is what was the process like and what are the coaches like? So the process is incredibly long. That is one thing I will say is it's not how you see it on TV that people are just kind of there and they audition and that's how it goes. It's not like that at all. There are three maybe four producer rounds before the actual auditions which are always really fun they they make the process really really fun and I really enjoy it I've, I've auditioned for The Voice before and I've, I've enjoyed it every single time but it's very long and you're waiting a long time to find out I mean I started auditioning in May and I found out I had got a blind audition in August so between May and August I was auditioning with producers and researchers for the show and everything like that. You do so many um, auditions that it's such a long process before you actually get to the blind auditions. But as I say, it's really, really fun and you get to meet some amazing people. You get to meet people who end up being on your team on the show. There was, there was people that I remember seeing auditions that the next time I saw them it was oh my god we're on the same team but yeah it's a really really fun process but after you go through those auditions you then do the blind auditions which is again probably the best moment of your entire life whether you get a turn or not it's so fun to just be there and and do it like it, you get the biggest adrenaline rush in the entire world I will never ever feel a feeling like that which is really annoying because, it, as I said, it was the best feeling in the entire world. Um, but then after that is battles. Battles is was the hardest one for me because I've never been in that situation of going up against someone. I've done duets with people where the outcome was both of us get the result rather than one person goes through and one person doesn't. It's either the both of us or not. Then semi-finals was probably a bit of like a breakthrough for me because I realized that this was serious now I had got to the semi-finals this was this could actually go somewhere I think I at first it was kind of when I got a blind audition it was like oh my god I've got a blind audition I don't care what happens then I got to battles and I was like like I, I got to the battles and I had got through and it was such a weird feeling because I never ever expected it and then to be in the semi-finals and and singing for a place in the final, it really became real. And I think that performance was 
me really really showing ollie and the public as well because the public were voting so it was really a moment for me to show i want this and this is why you need to pick me which obviously ended up working in my favor because i i got through to the final which was absolutely incredible and i never ever expected to get that far ever in my entire life because i was just happy to get by with it then to come second and and have that title of runner up on the voice was just absolutely amazing but the, the whole process you had so much support you had so many people there for you if you needed anything which was really really nice because obviously it's, it's quite scary going on tv and putting yourself out there but there were so many people that were just there to support you and um i just i would do it again in a heartbeat anyone that is thinking about auditioning or thinks that they're just they're not too sure about it whatever it is i promise do it and you will have the best time whether you get a blind audition whether you go through one audition it doesn't matter you will enjoy it i promise you now so eyebrows are done they didn't turn out the worst so now we are going to go on to eyeshadow and the next question is what is my biggest pet peeve i have a couple that are quite big to me one would be um people talking while you're singing or while anyone's singing it is so annoying to me because no matter where you're singing or what you're doing there is a person that has got up on stage and is singing in front of all of these people whether even if there's five people in a room that's such a massive thing and it might have taken that person months to pluck up the courage to stand in front of people and sing. And then there are people that are just gonna sit there and just talk over them. And it really, really gets to me because I know what it's like to sing and have no one listen, everyone starts talking. It's just not nice to sit there and watch. So when people are doing it around me, it really really bugs me so that's probably one of them and then people who lie i cannot stand liars it bugs me so much because why lie there is no reason for anyone to lie but i think i got that pet peeve from my mum because she hated liars and she was always so good at knowing when you was lying to her, which was not great for me and my brothers. Because if we were out and we said we were at friends and we were at the park, really, or something, whatever it was, she would know straight away. There was no getting anything by her. She was absolutely brilliant at knowing when we was lying. And I, I think I've now kind of got that from her because anyone lies to me i know they're lying i might not call them out on it because i'm too scared to I, I hate confrontation i hate any sort of arguing or arguments whether it's with me or someone around me whatever it is i absolutely hate it so i rarely confront someone if they're lying to me but i will always know i don't know how but i will just yeah but i hate it i i hate liars those two people talking while other people are singing and liars biggest pet peeves but next question i've got is am i an extrovert now i think i'm a bit in between an extrovert and an introvert because i'm not massively shy i'm not someone who can't talk to people and just completely shy I'm, I'm not like that at all but I'm also not someone who's the first to talk in a crowd of people I don't I'm a little bit wary when I meet new people but once you get to know me I'm not an introvert at all so I'm, I'm that in between I think people call it an ambivert is that what people call it 
I could be completely wrong and making that up. If I am making that up, that's what people are going to call it from now on. I'm telling you now, it's going to catch on. Because I'm sure that's what it's actually called though. I can't have made that up because that sounds like an actual proper word and I would not have made up something that sounds like a proper word. So, yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm that in between an extrovert and an introvert. <sighs> I thought I was going to be filming this on my own, but no, my brother has just walked through the door. <sighs> I can't stop now. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I just stuck this eyelash on off camera because I'm not gonna lie it's really hard to do it on camera so I'm gonna glue this one while I answer another question um but one of the really fun questions I got was what is my most embarrassing moment and the first thing that came to my head was when I was about 12 I was in a show and I had to walk on stage and it was in like a really serious scene I was playing Blousy in Bugsy Malone and it was a really serious scene and I had to walk on stage and I was just about to have an argument with someone and I was wearing a dress I had just done a quick change and I did not realize that my dress was tucked into my knickers so I walked out on stage stormed out about to have an argument with this boy and I could see my mum in the audience and she just sort of looked and I could see her face as if something was wrong. So I'm about to have an argument with this person. I kind of glanced down and I saw my dress being tucked into my knickers. So I had to sort of casually untuck my dress while still trying to keep in character and do this scene. And it was not fun. And it was so embarrassing. And I remember getting off stage and absolutely crying my eyes out because I knew that everyone had noticed because my mum noticed. I saw my mum click. And then after that, I was like, oh, everyone must have noticed. And I cried my eyes out. But now I think that's what is really funny. But at the time, I was not happy. Eyelashes are on. They actually went on a lot easier than I thought they would. But I'm going to do mascara. Next question is, where do I want to be? in five years which to me is a really really hard question because so much can change in such a short amount of time like coming from experience with the voice and so many other things so much can change and you don't even realize it's changing so i would love to say that in five years i have an album out and i'm my youtube channel's grown and i can do social media and youtube and and singing full time but you never know what's going to happen but that would be my kind of ideal world would be gigging singing youtube social media as my full-time job no more working in retail no more anything like that and just as long as i'm happy that would be my ideal world but as i say so much can change and you never know what's going to happen but as long as i'm happy i am healthy and i'm enjoying whatever i'm doing then that's all that matters to me it doesn't matter what is actually going on in my life as long as everything everything kind of with myself is good i'm happy i'm healthy and i'm enjoying my life then that's all that matters to me no matter what is kind of going on but yeah so i got really deep really quickly so as you can see off camera i just put on some red lipstick and this is the look finished normally i would have my hair down if i was doing this much makeup but trying to do my makeup with my hair down is not fun in the slightest but i hope you all enjoyed this video i hope you all got to know me a little bit better and you enjoyed listening to me ramble <laughs> for 20 minutes or however long this video is going to be but if you did enjoy it make sure you give it a thumbs up you subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the comments and i hope to see you all soon